Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to try and play something different. We are going to play The Forest of Doom by Ian Livingston. It's um, essentially a video version of, video game version of the fighting fantasy book from way back when. Um, and I played it when it came out in the 80s. Um, so I played the German version. So this is now um, the English version um, on Steam. And let's see how this plays. What I can tell you already is that it's actually deadly. I remember playing it and I remember dying so many times it wasn't even funny anymore. Now this is the intro and I'm liking it already. I've no idea what they have done with it or how this is going to work, but we shall see what we shall see. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So, um, let's start playing. Would you like to use your last placed bookmark? Um, restart the book. So it basically, oh, okay. Um, the Forest of Doom is a fighting fantasy game book, an interactive adventure in which you are the hero. You can only win by choosing the correct path, finding equipment, avoiding traps and surviving combat. Before embarking on your adventure, you must determine your own strengths and weaknesses with a series of dice rolls. You have in your possession a sword, some leather armor and a backpack containing provisions, food and drink. For the trip, you have been preparing for your quest by training yourself in swordplay and exercising vigorously to build up your stamina. Mm-hmm. You must first choose from one of three difficulty settings. This game book has been designed for optimum challenge on the adventurer difficulty mode. For newcomers to fighting fantasy, we recommend adventurer or free read modes. For older readers already familiar with the printed versions of this, of these game books, we recommend hardcore hero mode. Let's go with adventurer. You've chosen the adventurer difficulty mode. Before continuing, you must calculate your initial stamina. Your stamina score reflects your general constitution, your will to survive, your determination and overall fitness. The higher your stamina score, the longer you will be able to survive. You must roll two dice and add 12 to the number you rolled. Okay, so I guess this is actually old school in terms of that we will have to do some bookkeeping. Um, so this has not been really optimized for computers. So I'll be right back because I need a pen and paper. Okay, so here we are. Let's see, we are going to roll two dice. So unless they tell us otherwise, I just assume it's the D6s because I think I remember using D6s. So we're gonna roll and we rolled a five and a three, that's an eight. So we're gonna add stamina. That is um, 20. Um, stamina will go up and down during your journey, but if it ever falls to zero, you die. Um, we can eat to increase it. Now we determine our skill. Okay. Oh, we can do it there as well. Okay. Skill. Um... Options. I'm a bit lost already. Um, your position has been saved. To reload this position. Okay, so how do we... Okay, so skill. I have no idea. Probably also to... Okay. So, okay. 
And then we got stuck and it didn't work anymore. That's interesting. Oh, I get it. Okay, so, um, all right. Sorry. You roll a s your roll of 6 plus a base of 12, so your stamina is 18. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it obviously does do some bookkeeping for us. Okay, continue. Skill. Um, swordsmanship. Um, roll your starting skill. That's an eight. And then we need to determine our luck. One die. Now that's a nine. It's not too shabby. It's an average roll. Okay, next you must choose a potion to take with you. Hmm. Strength, stamina. We're going to take a potion of strength. Okay, so we have one potion of strength to increase stamina. So we're actually going to call it potion of stamina. Because why call it something different? <coughs> yeah, you can see that I'm a technical writer. I don't like it when people refer to the same thing using two different names. Okay, you're an adventurer, a sword for hire, and have been roaming the northern borderlands of your kingdom. Having always spurned the dullness of village life, you now wander the lands in search of wealth and danger. Despite the long walks and rough outdoor life, you are content with your unknown destiny. The world... Uh, ha holds no fears for you as you are a skillful warrior, well practiced in the art of slaying evil men and beasts with your trusty sword. Not once during the last 10 days since entering the northern borderlands. Oh God, I mean, the word breaks are the, um, terrifying. Have you set eyes upon another person? This doesn't worry you at all as you are happy with your own company and enjoy the slow sunny days hunting, eating and sleeping. It is evening and having feasted on a dinner of rabbit, spit roasted on an open fire. Mmm, yummy. Mmm. You settle down to sleep beneath your sheepskin blanket. There's a full moon and the light sparkles on the blade of your broadsword skewered into the ground by your side. You gaze at it, wondering when you will next have to wipe the blood of some vile creature from its sharp edge. These are strange lands, inhabited by weird and loathsome beasts, goblins, trolls and even dragons. As the flame of your campfire gently dies, you begin to drift asleep and images of screaming green-faced trolls flicker through... Your mind. Suddenly, in the bushes to your left, you hear the loud crack of a twig breaking under a clumsy foot. You leap up and grab your sword from the ground. You stand motionless but alert, ready to pounce on your unseen adversary. Then you hear a groan, followed by the dull thud of a body falling to the ground. Is it a trap? Slowly, you walk over to the bush where the noise is coming from and carefully pull back the branches. You look down to see a little old man with a great bushy beard, his face contorted with pain. You crouch down to remove the iron helmet covering his balding head and notice two crossbow bolts protruding from the stomach of his plump, chain mail clad torso. Picking him up, you carry him over to the fire and stir the dying embers into life. After covering him with the sheepskin blanket, you manage to get the old man to drink a little water. He coughs and moans. He sits up rigid, eyes staring fixedly ahead and starts to shout, I'll get them, I'll get them, don't you fear, Gillibrand. Big Leg is coming to bring you the hammer. Oh yes, indeed I am, oh yes. The dwarf, whose name you presume to be Big Leg, is obviously delirious from the poison-tipped bolts lodged in his stomach. You watch as he slumps down again to the ground, then whisper his name in his ear. His eyes stare unblinkingly at you as he again starts to shout, Ambush! Look out! Ambush! Ah, the hammer! Take the hammer to Gillibrand! Save the dwarves! 
his eyes half closed and the pain seems to ease a little. Um, his eyes half closed and the pain seems to ease a little. And as the delirium subsides, he speaks to you again in a low whisper. Help us, friend. Take the hammer to Gillibran. Only the hammer will unite our people against the trolls. We were on our way to Darkwood in search of the hammer, ambushed by the little people. Others skilled the, skilled the map in my pouch. What? Others killed. The map in my pouch will take you to the home of Yazdromo, the master mage of these parts. He has great magics for sale to protect you against the creatures of Darkwood. Take my gold. I beg you to find the hammer and take it to Gilibran, my lord of Stonebridge. You will be well rewarded. Biglek opens his mouth to start another sentence, but nothing comes out except his last dying breath. <sighs> you sit down and ponder Biglek's words. Who is Gilibran? Who is Yazdromo? What is all the fuss about the dwarfish hammer? You reach over to the still body of Big Leg and remove the pouch from the leather belt around his waist. Inside you find three gold pieces, 30 gold pieces and a map. Yazdromos Tower, Stonebridge, River, Footpath. Okay. Jingling caught. Jingling the coins in your hand, you think of the possible rewards which may await you just for returning a hammer to a village of dwarfs. How difficult can it be? You decide to try and find the hammer in Darkwood Forest. It's been a few weeks since your last good battle and, what is more, you are likely to be well paid for this one. With your mind made up, you settle down to sleep, having taken back the sheepskin blanket from poor Big Leg. In the morning, you bury the old dwarf and gather your possessions. You examine the map, look up to the sun and find your bearings. Whistling merrily, you head off south um, at a good pace, eager to meet this man, Yastromo, and see what he has to offer. Now turn over. You walk to Yastromo's. Uh, your walk to Yastromo's takes a little over half a day, and you arrive at his stone tower, dirty and hungry. As the tower is set back on the edges of dark wood, some fifty meters from the path you've been following, it is difficult to find. Finally, you walk up to the huge oak door, somewhat relieved to find that it does exist and that Big Leg had um, not been speaking wildly in his delirium. A large brass bell and gong hang from the stone archway. As you ring the bell, a shiver runs down your spine and you realize that the loud bong invades a deep silence, which you had not noticed before. There are no sounds of birds or animals to be heard. You wait anxiously at the door and hear slow footsteps descending the stairs from the tower above. A small wooden slot in the door slides open and two eyes appear and examine you. Well, who are you? demands a grumpy voice through the hole. You answer that you are an adventurer in search of the master mage Yastromo, intending to purchase magical items from him to combat the creatures of Darkwood Forest. Oh, well, in that case, if you are interested in buying some of my merchandise, you had better come up. I am Yastromo. He then turns and slowly climbs the stone stairs. Will you follow him up the stairs? Draw your... Well, we're going to follow him up the stairs. You follow the huffing and puffing old man in his tattered robes up the spiral staircase to a large room at the top of the tower. Shelves, cupboards and cabinets line the walls, all filled with bottles, jars, weapons, armor and all manner of strange artifacts. Yazdromo shuffles past the general clutter and slumps down in an old oak chair. He reaches down into his top pocket and pulls out a fragrant, no, a fragile pair of gold-rimmed spectacles. Placing these on his nose, he picks up a piece of slate and chalk from the table next to his chair and begins to write frantically. He then hands you the slate. Potion of healing, three gold. Potion of plant control, two gold. Potion of stillness, three gold. Potion of insect control, three gold. Two gold. Potion of anti-poison, two gold. Holy water, three gold. Ring of light, three gold. Boots of leaping, two gold. Rope of climbing, three gold. Net of entanglement, three gold. Armband of strength, three gold. Glove of missile dexterity, two gold. Rod of water finding, two gold. Garlic buds, two gold. Headband of concentration, three gold. Fire capsules, three gold. Nose filters, three gold. He tells you that um, all the instructions for use are written clearly on the labels attached to the items together with a suggested use. He sighs and tells you that unfortunately the magic in the items only works once, but they are the best you can buy for the money. Yastromo then asks you the reason for the purchase of the items and you tell him your story and your decision to continue the quest of luckless Big Leg. Ah, yes. Yastromo says slowly, rubbing his chin. 
I heard that the good dwarfs of Stonebridge had lost their fabled warhammer. Without it, their king is unable to arouse his people, despite the fact that the hill trolls threaten the village. Rumor has it that an envious king of another village or of dwarfs sent an eagle to Stonebridge to steal the hammer, which it managed to do. But, it, but as it flew over Darkwood, it was attacked by death hawks. And the hammer dropped into the forest and was lost. Oh, God. Apparently, two forest goblins found the hammer but couldn't decide who was to keep it. They wrestled for hours and gave up. Then they discovered that the handle unscrewed from the head and, kept, and the argument was settled. One kept the head, the other kept the handle. Then they parted, each happy with his new treasure. Who knows if they still have them? So I'm afraid your problems are doubled. I can tell you that the head is made of bronze and the handle is made of polished ebony. Both head and handle have the letter G inscribed on them. Your task is not easy. Good luck. Yay. Um, you thank Yasdromo and leave the room by the spiral staircase. Do I not get to buy anything? Okay. So let's see. What do we want? We have 30 gold. So we will definitely take a potion of healing. Um, Anti-poison, yes. So that's five. Seven. Ten. Twelve. Fourteen. Uh huh. Seventeen. Twenty. Twenty three. Twenty nine. I've no idea what this. Uh, Twenty six. But I think it's important. Twenty six. Twenty eight. So now we don't have any more money, so we will just keep going. Outside in the bright light, you, you notice the dead quietness again. A narrow path leads northwards from the tall grass surrounding Yasdromo's tower into the dense undergrowth of Darkwood Forest. In a few strides, you are surrounded by the dark and tangled forest. Stones and knotted roots seem to hide in the shadows... And you can almost believe that they are trying to trip you up. The light fades quickly and the air becomes moist and unpleasant. Deeper and deeper you go into the gloom. Eventually, the path forks on either side of a huge old tree. Okay, so it's 177. And from there we can go west or east. So we're going to go west to 289. The narrow, overgrown path continues to weave its way through the crowded forest. Strange animal cries echo through the trees. It's not long before you arrive at another function junction in the path. If you wish to continue west, yes. We're going to not end up and in going into a, a labyrinth and then just walking around crazily. We're going to keep going west. The path turns suddenly to the right and proceeds northwards into the dense undergrowth. Turn to 106. Suddenly off the path to your left, you hear cries for help. Of course we're going to aid the person in trouble. We are good people. 253. Oh, God. Clambering over the gnarled roots of the old trees, you head in the direction of the cries. After a few minutes, you see a man dressed in long, dark robes with his foot caught in a rusted rabbit snare. His face is masked by the robes and only his dark brown eyes are visible. Well, he looks trustworthy. Um, we're not going to help him because he doesn't look trustworthy. Walking along the twisting path, you see a small sinewy creature with brown scaly skin sitting on a log to the right of the path. He has a sullen expression on his face as he slowly tosses a black shiny rod on a leather cord back and forth between his hands. He might be one of the goblins you are looking for. Um, we're going to try and talk to this guy, 203. As you start to speak, to the, go the goblin looks up and smiles. Then he starts to metamorphose 
metamorphose before your eyes. He becomes taller and turns green. A large spiny tail extends from his back. His arms thicken and his hands grow sharp claws. His face distorts and becomes reptilian with red eyes, a wide mouth and dozens of razor sharp teeth. He's not a goblin, but a shape changer. Okay, and you must fight. Fight on. Um, so I rolled a 20. And um, he didn't, so we'll try this again. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And that is the end. You are dead. You have been beaten by Dark Forest, Darkwood Forest, the Forest of Doom. The end. So that was the Forest of Doom. Um, that was quick embracing. So I will not continue with this um, game because I really just wanted to show it to you. But it is pretty much like I remember um, the book. Um, it's deadly and it's terrible. So that's Ian Livingston's The Forest of Doom. It is essentially, um, a, well, it is a choose your own adventure. It is the choose your own adventure book, like um, uh, the wizard, uh, the, the warlock of um, Firetop Mountain or whatever it was called. That was probably the first one. And this is um, a video game implementation of it. But essentially, it is just the text and they have put in um, an engine for die rolling and stuff. So it is... Um, nicer i guess than just having to read the book so if you if you really like playing on a computer that's a lot nicer but um i will also tell you that they haven't aged well because there is no story it is really fighting fantasy it is all about fighting and the story element and the role playing element are very very um negligible um so you saw this um i actually will not continue i've got other games in this series um I may show you those, but um, this was The Forest of Doom by Ian Livingston, and you can get this on Steam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.